continuing our reading in Poppy's Return by Avi. Today is chapter 25, Family Talk. Poppy, her tail twitching ever so slightly, made her way out of the boot. Lily was waiting for her. Where's Junior? He's with Papa. Alone? gasped Lily. They're getting on wonderfully. They are? I think so. Poppy considered her sister. She seemed very tense, with eyes welling with tears. Her whiskers drooped, her ears flicked forward and back. Lily, you look sad. What is it? Lily shook her head. After a moment, Poppy said, It's you who looks after Papa, isn't it? Lily, wiping a tear from her cheek, nodded. Well, Mama and I, and he takes you all for granted, doesn't he? When Lily turned away, Poppy reached out and touched her sister. Lily, listen to me. You don't need to talk down to me, said Lily, just because you're the one who's going to become the head of the family. Lily, how many times must I say it? I have no intention of doing that. But you will. I know you will. You get your way with things like that. You always have been Papa's favorite. Lily, I was anything but his favorite. And I don't want to be head of this family. I am going back to my family. Why would you want to go back to that dark, dank forest and that dead tree with that dreadful, smelly porcupine living right next door? And I, said Poppy, can't believe you would want to live in a place without a shred of privacy. Lily held her up her head. I believe in loyalty to my family. Lily, I'm loyal to mine, said Poppy with all the force she could muster. But how could you walk away from all this? Because my life has changed, Lily. I like what it's become. I'm happy with it. Anyway, this house is about to fall down. For your sake, I hope it doesn't. But Junior is right. You're heaped together here. No privacy. Whatever happens, I am not going to stay. I still don't believe you, said Lily, and she rushed off. Poppy watched her go and started to follow, only to change her mind. The crowd of mice with all their noise had given her a headache, hoping to find a quiet place and tickled by a memory, she made her way up to the attic of the house. Long ago, when no other, when no older than Junior, she had come upon a tin can shaped like a house, complete with a chimney, which she had used for an entryway. Log cabin syrup, read the label. Poppy had licked the can clean, lined it with shreds of old newspapers, and declared it her private room. She was one of the few mice who wanted privacy. Moreover, Poppy suddenly recalled she had liked it dark, like Junior, among the snag's roots. Why had she done that? She asked herself. The answer came quickly. That made it all my world. Upon reaching the attic, Poppy was disappointed to find it was so crowded, as crowded as the rest of the house. Even so, she found her old can exactly where it had been and not looking very much different. She gave it a hard rap. It sounded as solid as ever. Heart swelling, she was about to climb in when a sleepy young mouse, roused by the sound of Poppy's steps, popped up out of the chimney. Oh, cried a startled Poppy. I'm sorry. I didn't think anyone would be here. Now that's all right, said the sleepy mouse. Who are you? Did you want me? No, it's just I... Uh, I used to, th this used to be my own room. The young mouse grew wide-eyed. But well, you're, you're Poppy, aren't you? Poppy nodded. Was this your space? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, said the mouse, jumping up. Yeah, it was empty, but if you'd like. No, no, that's all right, said Poppy, backing away in haste. It's not mine anymore, it's yours. Are you sure? Yes. Uh, I'm I'm honored to have it, called the young mouse as Poppy hurried away. Feeling annoyed to have found the young mouse in her old room, but even more annoyed that she was annoyed, 
A tear coursed down Poppy's cheek. Silly mouse, she scolded herself. It's not your room. You left it a long time ago. She sniffed, wiped the tear away, and then began to giggle. Poppy, decide who you are. The main room was teeming with chattering mice. To escape the noise and chaos, Poppy went out to the back steps. It was just as crowded, but when the mice saw the newcomer was Poppy, they shyly withdrew. Poppy made no protest. It was twilight. From the top of the back steps, Poppy could just see the edge of Dimwood Forest, like a distant curtain. Above it, a half moon was rising. Thoughts of Rye and the children bedding down around the snag for the night filled her. She missed them terribly. Yet here she was at Gray House, quite convinced nothing could be done to save it. I wondered if you'd be out here, came a voice. Poppy turned. It was her cousin Basil. Can I join you? Sure, Basil replied. Please, said Poppy. I'm really glad to see you. I brought you some seeds, he said, offering Poppy a double paw of what wheat berries. Thank you. I haven't eaten all day. For a while, the two sat side by side in silence, nibbling the seeds. Basil, said Poppy after a while, have you noticed when you're young, you don't want to be young? Then when you're older, you don't want to be old? But I guess it doesn't matter what we want. We're always getting older. Oh, my, said Basil. You are low. A bit. Neither of them spoke for a while until Poppy said, Thank you. For what? I haven't said anything. Exactly, said Poppy. Among the many things I've learned to love about Dimwood are its silent moments. Silence fills me. I don't know how I ever lived here. It's so crowded and noisy. And Greyhouse certainly isn't quiet agreed Basil. With so many living here, there is really is no privacy. Some of us think it might not be so bad if this old house did come down. We need a change. Problem is, no one knows how to bring it about. Basil, said Poppy, everybody seems to think I can come up with a way to deal with the bulldozer. You can't, can you? I doubt it, said Poppy. We better do something before it happens said Basil. I don't think we have much time. Basil, said Poppy after a while, why do you think our families are so hard? Mm, can't say. Maybe, said Poppy. It's because they seem easy. It's like in the forest where there are these game trails. It's much easier to follow one than to make a path of your own, but they don't always take you where you want to go, and after a while they vanish, and there you are on your own anyway. The two cousins spent most of the night talking quietly, catching up on f family gossip. Sitters, brothers, cousins, aunts, uncles, children, and spouses as well as shared friends. And when Basil finally left her, there were affectionate promises of more visits. Finally, a tired poppy slept quite comfortably on the back steps. She didn't wake until she heard Lily's voice cry. Poppy, a human has just arrived. He's headed for the bulldozer. And that's the end of chapter 25.